Hey everybody, so you requested that I am gonna do the SQL Intermediate Skills Certification Test. And here we go, we are gonna take the test now. Before we start into the test, let's do a little a sample test. Count the employees. Okay, let's solve this. The data for, so let's first switch to MS SQL. The data for the number employed at several famous IT companies is maintained in the company table. Write a query to print the IDs of the companies that have more than 10,000 employees in a scaling order of ID. Okay, output ID from the company table. Condition is bigger than 10,000 employees. Okay, so what I would do is select ID from, what is our table? From company table, where, so what was the condition? That have more than 10,000 employees. So we have a column here, employees, the total number of employees in the company. So we take where employees bigger than 10,000 people in a skinning order of ID. So order, order by ID, and we can write a skinning. We can also leave that out because it's the default anyway that it's gonna do a skinning. So let's run this now. Okay, so it was the correct answer. That's great. Let's submit the test. Yes, close this test. Okay, great. So the sample test worked out pretty well for us, and we are gonna continue with the intermediate skill certification test. So we have one section with two questions. Okay, confirmation. So product without sales. Let's switch to MSSQL. Given the product and invoice details for products at the, an online store, find all the products that were not sold. For each such product, display its SKU and product name. Order the result by SKU scanning. Okay, so output should be SKU and product name. Order by SKU scanning. So let's look at the schema. So we have product and invoice item. Okay, we just have two tables here. So what should be the output? So select, we want the output SKU and product name from product table. And let's give it an abbreviation P. So now we need also the invoice item table. And what exactly do we want to have? We want to have the products without sales. If they do not have sales, then they are not gonna be in the invoice item table because they didn't receive any invoices. So let's also give out invoice item here to make this a bit clearer. And let's join. So we want to make a left join because we definitely want to keep all of the items in product table and we want to join with the items and invoice item that match, but we want all of the product table. So we make a left join because we keep the left table, which in this case is the product table. And we join this product table with the invoice item table. And we give it an abbreviation, abbreviation ii on ii dot, how can we join them? So we have a note here, invoice item dot product ID, references product dot ID. So we join on ii dot product ID. So the product ID in invoices references the other one, references p dot ID. Okay, so now this join should work. Let's see what we get out here. Invalid colored name, invoice item. Inverse item should not be a column name, no. The column name should actually be, let's say, invoice ID, right. We want to get the invoice ID. 
so this is an actual column the other column was not right there was the table that is called inverse item not the column so now we have out here is the SKU here is the product name Game of Thrones Urban Decay and here's the invoice ID 1 okay so we see that Game of Thrones has an invoice ID so we don't want to have this ones out because we only want the products without sales so products without sale could for example be rose deep hydration because here in the third column is a null and we can also see that here null and that means this one has no reference at all in the invoice item and that is exactly the product that we also want to get out so let's leave this invoice id column here out because we don't want to have that in the output and let's write where the invoice item table has uh, the invoice ID null where invoice ID is null so we want to get these products out we want to order them by SKU so this should already be the solution let's see if it's gonna be correct and it's the correct answer very good so now we're going to submit and now we're on the second question business expansion okay so as part of business expansion efforts at a company your help is needed to find all pairs of customers and agents who have been in contact more than once okay so output pair of customers and agents with bigger than one contact for each such pair display the user id user id first name last name and the customer id name and the number of their contacts order the result by order by user id okay so let's look at the schema there are three tables customer user account and contact customer user account contact the, the pair of agents and customers represented by user account id customer id who have been in contact more than once is four seven only and have cont contacted each other twice okay so this is from the sample test case so let's see four and seven user account id and customer id so we have a customer table with id customer name city id customer address contact person email phone is active we have a user account and we have a contact okay so in the contact we have a user account id and a customer id okay so the contact table here is the one is the link between our customer table and our user account table because we have a user account id and we have a customer id in the contact table so now we have to know which ones are actually contacted each other more than one time so we are looking for identical pairs so what we can do is we could order this table select so what i'm trying to do now first is i'm trying to find a way to get this uh, contact table in a form that i can see easily who is contacted twice or more times so what i'm going to do is here i am going to give out from the contact table the user account id 
add the customer ID from contact. And then now I'm going to order it by user account ID and customer ID. So let's run this query. Okay, so now we have one, two, one, six. Okay, so the user account contacted two and six. So he never contacted the same agent twice. The two also didn't do that. The three didn't do that. Wait, the three contacted four people, but never the same customer twice. So the four, four contacted the same customer twice and it is the four seven. So how could I see that now? I could see that because I can see the four seven and the four seven that they are identical here. Okay, so maybe this will be a case for row number. So let's see row number from partition by user account ID and customer ID order by user account ID customer ID is row number. So what I did here now I made a row number, I made a certain partition so it should partition um, user account ID and customer ID into one partition. So whenever there's a new combination of user account ID and customer ID, it will give one number higher. So let's run this query. Okay, so the syntax is not correct. Row number over, so probably like this. I'm not sure about this syntax from row number. But I think we can get there. Row number over petition by. Ah, okay, so we forgot the comma here. All right, so now we have a row number here and we can see this one has the row number two because actually this is the only one that has in this partition that we made user account ID and customer ID. So every combination of this has a new partition. This is the only one that exists two times. So where the user account ID and the customer ID is identical for more than one time. So now we have here the number two, which is very good because now we can use this as a pre-statement with so what actually do we want the expected output? So the expected output will be user ID, first name and last name, customer ID and name and the number of their contacts. Okay, so we also have to join, but this is not really a problem here anymore. So, okay, so let's first do the join and let's put this one right at the last column because this is how it should be in the result set also. Okay, so now we have the row number, which is good. Here is the two. And we have the user account ID and the custom ID. What is missing is the names. That is the expected output. And of course, in the end, we only want this row number two out. We don't want all the ones out. So we have to filter in the end on this too. But first we are gonna try to get these names out here. So what we are gonna do for that is the join. So we have already a contact C and we are gonna join on the customer table, cast on cast dot. So what we can join ID equals 
C dot so the contact table has a customer ID and we are also going to join the user account table also on the contact table user account UA on UA dot ID equals C dot user account ID. So now we have joined the table customer and user account and that gives gives us a possibility to also get the names in here. So what should we, should we display? The user ID, we have that, the first name. Okay, so we need it from the user account table now. UA dot, here's the user account table, first name. And now we need the UA dot last name. So now we have the first name and the last name. And now we need the customer ID and also the first and the last name. So customer ID we have here. So the customer name basically, customer name. So let's run this one now. Okay, apparently we have some, okay, we forgot a comma here. User account name, fist name, no, not the fist name, the first name. Okay, so Jurgen Klopp, oh, interesting. The cosmetics store, Jose Mourinho, hmm, Josep Guardiola, that sounds like soccer coaches. Okay, so we have the table as we want it, almost. So. What we need now is just to get the last row here with a row number two. And what we can do for that is we can just put this one in an extra table with a row number S. So this is our row number table. And now we are just gonna select everything from the row number table, star from row number where, and now the column row number that I call named here row number should be two, equals to two. And now we should get the right result. So let's run this query. query. Ah, okay, order by we cannot use here anymore, but we have to use it in the last query, not in this CTE. That is what this uh, temporary table is called, but in the last output table. So let's run this query now. And there you go. So we got the right solution and now we can submit our code. We solved the first one, we solved the second one, now we submit the test. Yes, close the test. And that was it. Test submitted successfully. So thank you for watching, hope you could learn something and see you in the next video.